Last week, we talked about the Galileo Sephiroth situation and new evidence points to there being a living room Steam Deck console coming out from Valve within the next few months. We'll talk about it. Plus, did Unity Engine just pull an epic team kill on their own developers? And a new Steam Deck client update has hit and we'll review all of the good news. That's right, it's Steam Deck news time. All right, first up, I wanted to talk about this. Uh, if you're like me, if you're a geek about operating systems, then uh, I'm pretty excited about this and you might be too. So have you heard about React OS? It's an open source re-implementation of Windows. Uh, that's pretty nifty in my book. And while it aims to be binary compatible with the Windows applications and driver suite, it's also a long ways out from being actually able to play games. <laughs> the vast majority of games and uh, device drivers are simply not going to work on React OS. But that hasn't stopped the team behind the open source Windows alternative from getting React OS running on the Steam Deck. Now I get it, the question is, if it can't play games, then why would anyone want to do this? Well, it's all in an effort to enable UEFI support on the operating system. It certainly isn't the most practical use for the Steam Deck, I'll admit it, at least in terms of gaming, but it is neat to see. Uh, I really like open source operating systems. I'm a huge geek about operating systems. It's what I've talked about on this channel for the last nine years. So it's cool and I wanted to throw this in here because I think it's interesting. Next up, let's talk about Starfield. So have you guys heard the one about Bethesda games? It's actually a pretty funny joke. You see, you start playing a Bethesda game and... Well, color me surprised that Bethesda, of all companies, published a game that's broken to its core. Uh, we've heard a lot of folks complaining about the performance of Starfield across the internet. Reports have it that even the beefiest RTX 4000 series cards are having issues running the game. And yet little Todd Howard replies with a trite, you just need to upgrade your PC. Or perhaps your game engine is broken, Todd, you smug little sh**. So leave it to the open source community to discover these issues with Starfield and then not only that, but also fix them. Yeah, that's right. The Steam Deck and Linux gamers are soon going to be the ones with the best performance, regardless of GPU type. Thanks to the developers behind VKD3D, which is the open source re-implementation or compatibility wrapper for DirectX 12. Now these devs noticed the utter inefficiency of the code in Starfield's engine and how the engine is abusing certain DirectX 12 features. First, Starfield allocates its memory incorrectly where it doesn't align to the CPU page size. So if your GPU drivers are not designed to expect this, then your game is going to crash at random times. Another problem is that DirectX looks for hints about how to render a scene. Starfield sends in bogus hints via DirectX 12's execute indirect API call. This basically leaves the graphics driver caught off guard when trying to process the data and ends up introducing bubbles that uh, bubble up the command queue and end up muddying things up. These bubbles mean that the GPU has to stop what it's doing, double check the assumptions that it made about the indirect execution, and then start over again when it realizes it's wrong. To make things even worse, Starfield creates multiple execute indirect calls back to back instead of batching them together, meaning that the bubbling problem we talked about is compounded multiple times over. So VKD3D, which is a DirectX 12 uh, translation tool, it's bundled with Proton, has recently received an update which aims to fix these issues for Linux users. That includes Steam Deck players. And I'm really excited to see how Starfield performs once something like Proton Experimental integrates this update to VKD3D. But I also want to know what you think. Are you a Linux gamer? What do you think about this? Leave me a comment and let me know. And you can also like that smash button. It's the best way to tell YouTube that you want to see more videos just like this one. You can also subscribe if that's more your speed. Uh, I want to thank Marcus Batson, one of my top tier Singularity members over on Patreon. It's because of folks like Marcus that I'm able to keep this show in the air. So thank you. Also, the 28th of September will mark nine years for me making weekly videos. To celebrate this, I've got a promotion going on over on GardnerBryant.com. You can use the offer code nine years through the end of the month and you'll receive free shipping. This applies to any order over 30 bucks, uh, but it will work for any new or existing customers. I've got some pretty fun designs over in my merch store, so check it out. Uh, this is one of them. I've also got this shirt. Uh, this design is like inspired by the Xbox Jewel, the original Xbox design. I'm a huge fan of the original Xbox for some reason. 
Uh, anyway, I can't believe I've been doing this for nine years, uh, and it's because of you guys, so thank you. All right, so earlier this week, Unity Engine decided they wanted to trade whatever scraps of credibility they had left for some quick cash. They looked around at whatever they could find, desperate for more capital, and then they found it. What if they charged studios based on the number of installs of games running Unity Engine? Not purchases, installs. This isn't a fee per sale of a game. Nope, that would be understandable. Instead, this is a private tax levied by a corporation against end user behavior after the sale of a game. So let's say that I buy a copy of Among Us or another Unity Engine title, and I install that game on my desktop PC, and then I also install it on my Steam Deck. Well, guess what? The developers of Among Us now owe Unity up to 40 cents, 20 cents per install for two game installs that the developers have zero control over. Now, just from a practicality standpoint, this is absolutely insane. Imagine having a community get annoyed with a game update that you pushed as a developer, and then they organize a DDoS, except instead of you setting up a botnet and attacking your website, you have a modestly sized Discord server full of people who have already bought your game, and they just install it, launch it, uninstall it a couple times over. Boom, suddenly you have a $40,000 Unity Engine tax due. This is insane to me. This is truly beyond belief to me. This is a modern example of what's called vendor lock-in. Game devs have spent all of this time and energy building a game, promoting it and selling it, only to have the rug pulled out from underneath them by Unity Engine, a company they thought that they could trust, and they have spent money and time investing in. It's not like they can suddenly port their game over to Godot Engine or something else. They're stuck. They're essentially trapped there, and Unity is exploiting this. Now, I feel for Unity developers here. I, I really do. These are folks who just wanted to make a game, and they hitched their wagon to, I don't know, a serial killer? <laughs> In this metaphor, Unity Engine is Jeffrey Dahmer, I guess. Look, if you're going to develop a video game that you intend to make money from, you either have to develop your own engine or use a free and open source one. There really aren't any excuses. Unity Engine has proved that you can't expect anything other than a rug pull from companies like this. It's just how it works. Now, my company is developing two games right now. One of them is using Godot and the other is a browser game. We had seriously discussed using Unity Engine because my developer was familiar with it, but I'm so glad that I staunchly refused to invest in Unity. They're evil. I knew they were evil, and I saw this coming a mile away. Hopefully, there are many teams out there who can make the switch to Godot or another open source engine. I know it won't be easy, but it will probably be worth it for a lot of developers. I'd love to see massively successful games like Among Us port their games to Godot, and just as a big middle finger to Unity. And I would really love to see Unity Engine die a painful death. I mean, they're completely unethical. They're owned by like a malware company at this point. Literally, that's look it up. But I also know that Unity Engine dying a painful death pr would probably hurt a lot of indie developers. But I would really like to know what you guys think about this. Leave me a comment. Now, I've said it hundreds of times, maybe a thousand times anyway, but the Steam Deck is a handheld console that can play PC games. And I stand by that statement. And it seems that Valve is working on a living room VR console too. According to data mining from Sadly It's Bradley on YouTube, the Sephiroth APU we talked about last week is actually talking about a souped up APU for a VR console that can plug into your TV. Now, I speculated that it was part of the upcoming Deckard VR headset when we talked about it last week, as did many others. But now it seems there's a lot more to it. As Upload VR points out, the term Galileo EV2 was discovered in the Steam Deck's firmware back in February. EV2 standing for Engineering Validation Version 2, which is a stage of hardware development meant to test near finalized design. So the EV2 version of the Galileo hardware was referenced back in February, and then references to Galileo, as well as the Sephiroth APU, have made their way into the Linux kernel. And sadly, it's Bradley and his team of data miners have also uncovered evidence of a VR Link wireless connection. Uh, the details here are intriguing. The VR Link standard has a PC create a wireless hotspot of sorts, and then the headset connects directly to the hotspot rather than connecting across the Wi-Fi network. This should save on data packet switching and latency issues. 
And wouldn't you know it, Valve has just had radio hardware certified in South Korea? I don't think that's a coincidence. Most interesting of all is something I talked about well before we even had details on the Steam Deck. In Jeff Keighley's The Final Hours of Half-Life Alex, we see a photo inside of Valve. It depicts what looks like a game console sitting underneath the TV. It has a ring of light on its front, and this is something that matches up with a Valve patent filing, which shows a set-top box with a similar ring on the front. Now, according to both the patent and information discovered through data mining, this console seemingly has a proximity sensor that will light up as a user approaches it. The Deckard headset supposedly has inside-out tracking. Now, could this console be paired with the headset to provide a single source of truth for the headset with the rest of the tracking being happening inside the headset itself? That's speculation, but there is some evidence to support it. Now, the question is, how long until we see a new device revealed from Valve? The Valve Index got radio certification just a month before its release, and the Steam Deck got radio certification three months before its release. And with EV2 already come and ostensibly gone back in February, I suspect we'll see details of this Galileo device before Christmas, perhaps even releasing in time for the holiday season. Now, what I would like to see though, is for this new VR hardware to ship with a new game. Half-Life Alex was an absolute triumph. It was an amazing experience for me. It really was profound. One I've revisited multiple times, but Alex is literally the only game of its caliber in the VR space. And aside from sporadic Beat Saber sessions, my Valve Index has pretty much gone unused. Is it possible that the teased Half-Life VR, Half-Life 3, whatever they're calling it, is going to release to coincide with this new VR headset from Valve or VR console from Valve? I'd love to hear your thoughts on all of this. Sound off in the comments below. Okay, it's been a minute since we've had a stable client update for the deck, and this one has some pretty useful inclusions here. First up, there has been a lot of fixes, from the processing shaders dialogue no longer flashing to broken screenshot notifications being fixed. We've had a range of updates, but the biggest fixes in this release include resolving an issue where a game would request the virtual keyboard but it wouldn't be displayed in game mode, and good news for anyone who speaks Indonesian, the deck client now supports your language. There have been multiple fixes for remote play, including added support for high quality 4K streams, buttons being stuck down, occasional crashing, and uh, device authorization issues. And there were also multiple desktop mode features, including improved reliability for the back button, the settings menu can now be resized, uh, improved low battery notifications, and a new option for the in-game settings that allows the overlay browser to restore tabs when starting a game. All in all, this is another excellent update. But if I can talk to Valve directly for a minute, I want more features, man. I miss the exciting days when the Steam Deck was brand new and features were coming off the press hot. I know you're polishing the features that you've already got, but I want new features for the Steam Deck. Hopefully we'll see new features with the release of this new hardware we talked about, but I really want something meaty for the Steam Deck specifically. FSR 3.0 in the performance menu, perhaps? I don't know. Anyway, that's all the Steam Deck news that I could find this week. Leave me a comment and let me know your thoughts on any of the stories we talked about, or did I miss a story? Hit me up, let me know. I want to thank my friends and my patrons who make what I do here a reality. If you believe in the work that I'm doing here, you can use the links below to pledge your monthly support. It's all greatly appreciated, and it goes directly towards these videos. I think that's going to do it for now, though. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a great day, and I'll see you next time.